Good morning. It is day 324 of our 365-day Bible study. We are looking at the moment at those parts of the story of Jesus that are unique to St. Luke and don't appear anywhere else in the Gospels. And today we're looking at the birth of John the Baptist. This is Luke chapter 1, verses 57 to 80. The time finally arrived for Elizabeth to give birth, and she had a son. Her neighbours and family heard the news, that the Lord had shown her such a great mercy, and they all came to celebrate with her. On the child's eighth day they gathered to have the child circumcised, and they would have named him Zechariah after his father, but his mother told them not to. He is going to be called John, she said. They replied to her, there's nobody else in your family called that. And they made signs to his father, asking him what he wanted the boy called. He asked for a slate and wrote, His name is John. And they were amazed. Straight away his mouth opened and his tongue was untied, and he spoke blessing God. All over the Judean hill country, people were talking about this, and everyone who heard about these things remembered them and asked themselves what this child might become, since the Lord's hand was on him. Filled with Holy Spirit, his father Zechariah prophesied like this. Let me bless the Lord God of Israel. He has visited his people and saved them. He has trumpeted a saving proclamation for us in his servant David's family. Long ago he told us in the words of his holy prophets that we would be saved from our foes and from all that those who hate us would do to us. He said that he would make real his mercy for us, which he had promised to our ancestors. He promised to remember his holy covenant, his oath which he swore to our ancestor Abraham, his promise that once we were freed from enemy captivity, we would be free to serve him without being afraid any more, living every day of our lives before him in holiness and righteousness. You, my boy, will also be called the prophet of the Most High. You will precede the Lord to prepare the road before him, giving knowledge to the people about how to be saved by having their sins forgiven. They will be forgiven by God in his tender mercy once the day dawns upon us from above, giving light to people now sitting in the darkness and in death's shadow to light our feet on the pathway to peace. The child grew up and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the desert until the day he was shown to Israel. So, continuing our cruise through Luke's unique contribution to the Gospel, we now come to the birth of John the Baptist and his father's outburst of Jewish piety as soon as his voice had been restored. It is always important to know if your name has a meaning. My Christian name, Alan, is of Celtic origin and carries echoes of harmony and peace. My surname is of German origin and comes from a class of village elders in medieval Central Europe. Now these things speak of my ancestry and my parents' hopes for me as our country started to recover from the biggest war the world had ever known. John's name also has a meaning. In the Gospel of John, the evangelist gets it right when he says in John 1, 6, John was a man sent from God. John means God's gracious gift. Both Zechariah and Elizabeth agree that this break in family tradition is what God wants, and the name is important. Once Zechariah has his tongue back, he can speak of God's praises. First he echoes Old Testament themes concerning God continually rescuing Israel from her foes and restoring the nation. Sadly, each restoration was followed by another fall, but now Zechariah is looking for a permanent solution, the fulfilment of God's wishes in full. This is expressed totally in terms of which a pre-Christian Jew of the time might have been expected to use. That's why there are echoes that would fall short of the Christian understanding of the Messiah's role. For Zechariah, it's still political and military. 
Israel must win the fight for its independence of Rome and its pagan rule so that the people can once again offer God worship in a form they regard as pure and undefiled. It will be a reign of peace from which fear has been eliminated, but Zechariah does not expect the peace to include reconciliation or former pagans to be included in the new kingdom. Luke expresses the thoughts of an old priest really accurately. His song is sung at morning prayer by Christians all over the world every day. We sing it for the confident hope it expresses that the knowledge of salvation will be available for all, that the light will shine into people's minds, that the fear of death will be no more, and that peaceful lives will be ours to inherit. Still a way to go then? I think so. I'll see you tomorrow for the next part of our story.